the nether an ancient realm has currently unknown origins and stories in its most recent history the nether perhaps was inhabited by two or three particular undead creatures it is unclear how these creatures may have lived following our story when the first portals begin to open pig creatures were then introduced to this new dimension the pigs were taken by one of the nether creatures who then joined in the nether creatures worship and ownership of gold over time the two became one in what we now know to be piglets a creature who inherited the bartering and fighting abilities of pigmen but lost the fire resistance of the original nether creature during their time in the nether piglins truly began to dominate the dimension Piglins were able to mine out all of the netherite and build numerous structures for housing and farming. Eventually, the players of the overworld returned with their desire to explore the nether, but would have to prove their worth to the nether's rulers. Thus, the great nether trade began. Both players and piglins dedicated resources to hold up their portals, putting decorative blocks around them and putting gold blocks at the top to, or, in order to signify their peace through gold. Over time, the two civilizations became interconnected. Portals dotted both dimensions. In addition to their revered gold, piglins at some point gained access to some of the overworld's gems, such as feathers for arrows, iron for their chains and lanterns, stone for lodestones, and diamonds for tools. But eventually, a threat was soon approaching this unity. Perhaps in retaliation of the piglins' methods of rule being oppressive and asserting their ownership over the realm, Another undead mob lurked in the shadows. With this shorter story out of the way, I wanted to discuss a couple things. You know, when it comes to piglins, I have been doing a lot of thinking, um, and I honestly think that the original creatures of the Nether uh, did indeed breed with pigmen of the overworld once they were brought over, as we explained in some of our other stories, um, and created piglins. Um, and I think it makes more sense to think that these original creatures may have been undead themselves um, Given that when piglins and hoglins go out of the dimension, they turn, you know, half undead. They're, they're zombified um, Which is interesting and I, I can't really see why that would be the case simply by mixing interdimensional mobs even if the uh, the offspring came out incorrectly even if it's like an incorrect breeding um, being, it being undead is, is stands out to me. So I really think that you know that would be the case um, if you know two mobs are mixed um, and one is undead and one is not, and then they would have this kind of half breed. And of course, I think the idea that piglins are this half breed uh, is supported by the idea that you know, as we said in the last video, piglins don't really belong in any dimension. Um, they can't don't really belong belong in the Nether because unlike other Nether mobs, they don't have fire resistance or lava resistance which is you know strange that neither them or hoglins have that kind of resistance um and they don't really exist in any other dimension because they turn zombified when they leave the nether so they're they really seem like they're in this weird place and i think that would come that would happen that would occur if you know there's this kind of interdimensional mixing between two mobs um and i think what's what's special about their interdimensional mixing is the fact that one mob would be undead because i think that you know a mob like uh magma cubes may also be a result of an interdimensional mix but they don't really seem to have any issues uh between dimensions or whatever the case may be now you know it could just be you know hey between two different um interactions one of the offspring gained fire resistance and the other one didn't that's just kind of how it works uh, but you know i think the one thing that really separates the the piglins would be the case that um their nether predecessor would also would is also undead and i think that could allow um, a lot more error in piglins now when i think uh thinking about you know the next episode the very next episode will be about um, you know, the wither coming into existence, which really is, you know, kind of what we've been building up to. Uh, the first three episodes have been about pre-wither times or pre-beginning times, you know, because the existence of the wither is like noted as the beginning. And I think, of course, not necessarily the beginning 
of the world of Minecraft. It could be, but I think the evidence doesn't really suggest that so far. I think it suggests that the existence of the Wither, the first instance of the Wither, uh, is the beginning kind of a, of a new era. So like the era that we live in in Minecraft is kind of in the middle of the post-Wither era. Uh, the videos that we've been describing so far were the pre-Wither other era <laughs> stuttering but the pre wither wither era uh where you know the players begin to uh interact with the nether then we have the great nether trade which will be explained here um and you know piglins are becoming a thing and there's this interconnection between the dimensions which allows the wither to you know eventually be built in the overworld as well and cause destruction on both sides um and i think of course we'll get to more details when it comes to that uh, I know when it comes to kind of the pre-wither nether, we really don't have much uh, since the nether doesn't have as many mob interactions or any structures that we can really pull evidence from like the overworld does so that we can really look into uh, what the nether was like before the first portals began to open. You know, we, we really, it's, there's really nothing there. Really the entire nether, the nether's history really kind of begins with, um, Piglins and the Great Nether Trade. There's really not much to go off of before then. It's a little bit more speculative. Um, and hopefully we find something that gives us more information um, in the future. But uh, right now, this is it is really kind of like that secondhand theory, that second level theory, where it's like we're kind of using our theory to build a second theory. And that's kind of where the, the pre-Wither Nether kind of stands right now. So I guess with that being said, I don't really want to uh, talk too much about this and I'll save most of the talking for the episode, uh, specifically when the wither comes and how that might play out. Um, but yeah, with that being said, I think everything here kind of makes sense. I think the idea that um, the Great Nether trade happened is rather reasonable given how many uh, overworld items exist in the nether. like. Uh, feathers for their arrows since there are no natural chickens in the nether. Um, I mean, the iron they use for their chains, the stone for their lodestones, all the diamond tools and armor that you can find in their chests. Um, it, it really suggests a lot of trade. Um, especially the portals are, you know, decorated and kind of seem to be held to, um, kind of are esteemed a little bit in their building. They seem to be decorated. Uh, on both sides, of course, it's not necessarily a one-sided thing because if the players were just going to the nether uh, simply on their own without interacting with piglins, I don't think there would be any need to like put special blocks around it, put a chest specifically with gold and uh, portal related items, putting gold blocks at the top and kind of holding the portal up with chains. It seems as if that, you know, they do this on both sides in order to, you know, show their connection, show that they are trying to uh, signify that you know they're using this portal uh, to respect the Piglin Empire and whatnot. Um, and I think you know this kind of relates to the Piglin personality, which you know may have been their downfall. This kind of oppressive, owning everything, war-like personality um, that perhaps the Wither skeleton simply did not like, which led uh, which led to the creation of the Wither. Um, but and I, and I think that that personality relates to like why they might not attack our us as players when we wear gold because if they feel as though they own gold and we're going to present ourselves wearing it and like we're kind of, I think that's a sign of like humility in the sense that kind of hey I'm submitting to your authority within this dimension you know you you kind of own me in a sense um, and I think you know that seems to fit in line with the Piglin story um, and I think the last thing I'll say when it comes to uh, kind of like a timeline of the Minecraft theory that I'm trying to build is that, you know, we're kind of looking at two or three different time periods. You know, when we play the game, we're existing in our post wither time. Um, and with the Caves and Cliffs update, adding the archaeology system really shows that there's kind of a pre wither time um, that is also studying a kind of prehistoric Minecraft world. There's like, there's abandoned sections uh that is trying to study an older section which you know that's very interesting that that would be the case that there's two unpresent histories in minecraft where one is studying the other and now we come into the game and study um them both 
which is very interesting. And I think that really supports the kind of way I'm building the story um, where there's, although we haven't covered like prehistoric Minecraft, uh, given that there's very, very scarce information related to that. Um, but, you know, building up our pre-wither Minecraft and then going into the third era of the post-wither Minecraft, which is why the wither is kind of like the beginning, um, because it would be the beginning of this new era um, in the era in which we play the game in. And so I find that very interesting, um, and I'm very excited to get into the next episode, and hopefully the Cave Eclipse update gives us more information to work with. Uh, but with that being said, don't be a Fortnite fool, Hito hypocrite, or Roblox reject. Always be an amazing Minecraft master. Stay blocking.